so I've been playing around with autopilot device preparation for a little while now and I wanted to explore the lack of hardware hash requirement. Now the hardware hash collecting requirement or the, the need to have a vendor or CSP add devices to your autopilot devices list when you purchase them is quite simple. Intune needed to know which tenant your devices belonged to. But well, actually Intune didn't need to know that at all. It only needed to know that if it was going to do stuff before the device was logged into and that you know that was possible but it wasn't the primary use case for autopilot that was the white glove scenario or the um, self-deploying scenario it wasn't the primary use case of user-driven autopilot so to satisfy a requirement for something that wasn't the primary use case every organization had to do this bit of extra work to add each device to a list in their tenant now, the requirement to collect a hardware hash, rather than just type the make, model, and serial number into that list, came about because Microsoft realized that it would be trivial and very likely that some admin would add every device in the world to their tenant. Uh, they'd just figure out how to generate all the serial numbers, the makes and the models, and write a PowerShell script and add them all to Intune. And this was a real problem, because if I added every device in the world to my tenant, it would essentially lock all of those to my tenant and no one else would be able to autopilot a device or even log into a device because it'll be locked to my tenant. Pretty big problem. And so to mitigate that very obvious risk, Microsoft made it impossible for normal admins to use the serial number, the make and the model, these three items that CSPs and, and vendors can use to add devices to the tenant they had to use this convoluted hardware hash method which wasn't even a hash it was just it was just some way to make it difficult to do and yet here in autopilot device preparation as i mentioned at the start we no longer need a hardware hash you might have seen in my last video i took a device that was freshly built and not registered in my tenant and this worked and it worked because personal devices were allowed in my test tenant so what about organizations that want to prevent personal devices? Where well, it's simple. You add the make, model, and serial number to your corporate devices list in Intune. And so the obvious question is, well, why is that okay now? When it wasn't for the past six years? And I think the answer is that now it doesn't matter if I add every device in the world to my corporate device identifiers list in Intune because that has no effect on those devices as they enter the out-of-box experience in the autopilot prep scenario. Now, when a device is turned on for the first time, the user enters their email address and logs in, and then the Intune service checks if my device is in the list. It checks the tenant that the user belongs to. That device serial number could be in hundreds of tenants, but it's only checking the one tenant that the user is logged into. And so that solves the hardware hash problem. And only those organizations that want to prevent personal devices need to collect any information at all. And so, on to the next step, adding Windows devices as corporate. Let's look into it. First, we're gonna have a look at how we can prevent personal devices in the first place. I'm gonna to head to Intune and down to Devices, Enrollment, and we have this device platform restriction. We have this default one for all users. I'm going to use that one for now. It actually covers all of these different um, Android, Mac OS and iOS. But it's got Windows in there. So that will be fine for now. And as you can see, I allow personally owned. I'm going to change that. I'm going to choose edit and choose block. And that would mean that the autopilot device prep scenario that I used on the last video wouldn't work. It would prevent me from um, building that device. And I think, according to Rudy Ooms' blog, it's it's not a particularly pretty error that it gives the user. So let's, I'm not going to test that right now. So I've prevented personal devices, and we need to add the devices corporate. So let's take a look at how we do that. I head back to device enrollment, and we have this corporate device identifiers tab up here. Now, if I add... Uh, if I enter manually, you can see we've got IMEI and serial number, and those don't work, right? So I don't have make, model, and serial number as a, the three options here. So we cannot use manually enter. 
So if I go back, I'll show you what you have instead. If we choose add, upload a CSV, and then with this we have IMEI serial number and manufacturer or make, as I keep, as I keep referring to it, model and serial number, which is for Windows only. And then a little bit of a, I haven't read this yellow box yet. Selecting identify it, make model and serial number means only devices matching this list will be defined as corporate owned. This means all other devices enrolling will be defined as personal for your win for Windows and your tenant. That could be important. I haven't quite digested that yet. That could be important. Let me think about that in a bit. So for the tuple, which is the three um, the three items, manufacturer, make, and serial number, we just need a serial a, a, a CSV like that. Um, and so that's pretty easy for most organizations. They'll have like a Lenovo device and have the serial number of that and the model of that and put that into a CSV. I primarily use virtual machines for my demonstrations and that's what I'm going to go and use now. It's a bit more convoluted to get uh, that information from a virtual machine. I'll show you why. So for example, if I was to want to get this, uh, these devices serial numbers, it's not possible to get it from the GUI. I need to, well, I need to crack open PowerShell and then this command, which is get doing my object and then the computer name of the virtual host, in this case, Academy host from the Apple Shield Academy. Uh, and then this, this will give me the, the serial number. So I'll do that. And there is the element name. So the computer name and the serial number. So I've extracted those into a, a CSV so that I can, I can use them. That's one way of doing it. The other issue is that it doesn't actually give me the make and model. And one of the best ways to get the make and model is to use the hardware hash collection. I'm not going to do that. That would be insane. Uh, one of the one of the other ways to make sure you get it correct is to open the virtual machine in sysprep mode, the control shift F3 approach. And once you're there, you can then uh, do the standard thing to get um, a serial number. So it's WIC BIOS get serial number. And there's a serial number confirmed and uh, WMIC CS product name identifying number and let's grab um, vendor as well. Oh, can't have spaces in there. Okay, so we have identifying numbers, that's a serial number, a virtual machine, and Microsoft Corporation. So if you're building a CSV for a virtual machine to test autopilot device prep, it'll look a little bit like this. So you have, uh, I've called it corporate identifiers.csv, you don't need to, but it's Microsoft Corporation, virtual machine, and then the serial number. I think, I've not done this before. This is me doing it for the first time. You'll see them be added to my list. So let's do it. Corporate identifiers import. Just add that there. Choose add. It says adding two devices. Let's see if this actually works. I mean, theoretically, it should add them. Whether it actually lets them build is the next question, but we'll we'll see that. Okay, back over to enroll. Uh, okay. Import it successfully and. Perfect, we have those added there. So I think I can just go ahead and try and build those now and it should work. Let's try it. Back over here, I will uh, just get this back into the Ubi. Okay, here we are. So we'll choose next, yes. And yes, now remember that this device is added as a corporate device, it's not necessarily added to any list to show that it's going to be an autopilot device because you don't add it to lists for, for that it's just listed as a corporate device so when a user logs in it will realize that it's corporate and not personal and then if the user and device if the user and device no if the user is in scope for autopilot device prep 
the device will go through that process. So let's set things up for your work or school. So we'll do Erin at last coffee. Okay. So straight into please wait while we set up your device. I guess it would have failed already. We'll see. We'll see. Obviously I'll speed this bit up so that we don't all have to wait for this to succeed or fail. I'll get through it nice and quick. Oh, didn't even need to. This feature is not supported. So something went wrong. Um, the error code that is shown refers to device restrictions. So it's clearly the fact that I've blocked personal devices and I'm trying to use a corporate identifier to get this to work. I have added the uh, make, model and serial number as far as I can gather it from the virtual machine. Clearly I've missed something. Hopefully one of you in the comments or on LinkedIn or, or Twitter can tell me what I've done wrong. I'm not going to try and figure it out while recording a video because the editing would be insane. But please like and subscribe if you want to see what happens next. And hopefully we'll get it figured out and I'll release a video really soon. See you next time.